everybody how are you doing today I'm Bonnie Hunter this is my basement this is where I sew and occasionally I turn on the camera in my uh, basement so you can sew along with me today I am sewing on my uh, 1950s Singer 301A if you ever wondered what the initials are after a Singer model number a stands for Anderson, South Carolina. So this gal is pretty close to where she was made. This one was made in the USA. If you have like a 99K, the initial K stands for Kilboe, Scotland. So you've got a Scottish baby there if you're sewing on any Singer model with a K after it. And there were lots of other places where uh, Singers were manufactured, but I like knowing that um, this plant was real close within a couple hours drive of, of where I live now. It's been a while since we've done quilt cam. Um, I took a two-week trip to Ireland and then came back and we were planning on doing quilt cam last Wednesday when I got a phone call from my good friend Tanya and she wanted to come spend a couple days with me so we put quilt cam on hold again. So I apologize to those of you who had to fall by the wayside while real life took over for me. It's really important for me to um, do real real things with with in-person friends, in-person family, take care of those things first, and then we work quilt cam in and around that. Today I'm still working on da, 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 my crumb strips. My basket has not gone down. No elves sewed while I was gone. So this is a, a fun way for me to spend the day. Basically all I am doing is covering these strips that are two and a half inches by eight and a half inches with random scraps of fabric. If a strip is too small or a piece is too small to cover that two and a half inches across, you can sew two pieces side by side and then use them as if they were one piece on there. So the piecing is quite random and you can see some of the strips have leftover half square triangles, little corners sewn on. However that piece is, when I pick it out of the basket, I will do what I have to do to add to it. This one here, I trim off a little corner there, is a largish triangle and I could decide which way I'm going to deal with this whether I want to put it down this way which would leave me a large half square triangle or I can put it sideways like this and sew two more corners on to give me a flying goose look um, not sure what I want to do with this but I think I'm going to put this one actually over this one corner because looks like my piecing was going crazy up in this one corner Remember when you're sewing through paper that you need to put your stitch length down. And I'm going to move that a little bit smaller. And I'm also going to take off my little sticky seam guide here. I was putting borders on a quilt this morning, so we'll, we don't need that right now. Um, I've spent quite a bit of the last week treadling my heart out. And today my legs are tired. <laughs> so it feels really good to be... Um, going with a little bit of electric juice today. Let me see if I can change the angle of the camera just a little bit. I don't know if I can so that you can see what I'm doing here. I had trouble in an earlier uh, quilt cam episode. If the camera hits the back side of the machine first before focusing on my face or whatever it is, you get me blurry but you get the machine nice and close and clear. This camera is a not a very expensive external USB laptop camera so we, we just have to be sure that um, it focuses where it needs to. I think I need my other sharper scissors. One thing that you really need when you are doing crumb piecing like this is good scissors and a waste paper basket. Oh it is right here to the side of me. Um, we like to do a lot of stuff with rotary cutting but I find 
as a, as a scrap quilter and one that likes to work with little tiny pieces, a good pair of scissors, real scissors, I'm talking scissors, guys, is probably the best tool. I don't hardly use the rotary cutter until it's time to square these up. It just takes too long. Just going to sew pieces on here. You can lay them down at an angle. This is a continuation of a project that I started before going to Ireland. So if this looks like a repeat video, that's okay. We all know that it's the repetition part of quilting that takes the longest. We get really excited about new techniques and new patterns and new colors and new fabric. But we get bored with the repetition. And that's what Quilt Cam is all about. This is a time for you also to pull something out of your long list of UFOs. Put in some time. Put in some repetition. Don't think about, oh, how long this is going to take. Just enjoy every moment of the entire process. I've just sewn that corner on there, and I kind of like how that looks. I grabbed just a small handful of scraps here. And I've got another basket here. I'm going to grab some more. And we're just going to work from this basket until I need to grab some more. This <laughs> machine sounds like a weed whacker. When I am sewing, I am looking for colors that I think will look good next to each other. Now, this piece is way too big, but I can cut something off of it. You can lay pieces down at an angle and sew. We're just trying to go maybe about a oh, quarter inch or so beyond the edges of the paper. Because sometimes when you flip these up, they, they want to go in a direction that you weren't planning on and you might find yourself short of the paper. If that's the problem, just sew something else on over it. Okay, here's a large half square triangle. What can we do with this? And one thing I forgot to do was plug in my iron. I'm going to take a second to do that in a minute. Okay, so this one won't cover all the way, so I'm going to have to add another rectangle or a piece to the side of this one. What have I got in here that can work? Sometimes I find myself with nothing but just lots of little, little stuff, and that's when I'll go back into my basket and grab some more. And that's green. We've got a lot of green going on. Maybe I need some blue. Okay. If you're following along on my blog while this is live, you can leave me a comment on the blog post or a comment on the YouTube video if you're watching live in YouTube. Or you can leave me a comment under my guest book if you're at the blog at quiltbill.blogspot.com. I want to ask you, please, if you are, are just a troll, to please watch what your comments are. There's been some really not nice comments that are just really unappreciated. It's not funny um, when when you're not nice with what you say. It's a, uh, you know, let's just, it goes back to the, what, what our mothers told us. If you can't say anything nice, just don't say it at all. Go somewhere else. We are a community of quilters who are here because we love our art. We love working with fabric. We love uh, making quilts for those in need. How many of you have read about the disaster in Calgary happening right now? Um, lots of flooding. The last I heard, they were thinking of moving zoo animals because the zoo was in danger of being flooded out. It's just, you know, a, a terrible, terrible thing. You can never mess with Mother Nature, and um, you can never second guess Mother Nature. So if those of you are interested in making quilts for those in need in Canada, I will be posting an address later on the blog. We had that go through Facebook last night. So if you're on my Facebook page, um, Quiltville Friends, you can scroll through the posts to find that address. If you are anywhere um, in Canada and would like to send quilts to help, that would be a, a wonderful thing to do. I am working on two strips at a time, using each as the leader ender for the other. I find this is the best way 
for me to keep my work into, in, under control and to keep it moving rather quickly. It takes a lot longer if I were to chain a long chain together and then have to snip all those together and press each of them before I could continue to sew. But working on just two at a time is sufficient to keep the circle going. And uh, I can get quite a bit done this way. Sew this on. These little vintage machines are just amazing. I had a little bit of an upset this afternoon. I was planning on putting out my um, Morse, the blue Morse that I just had rewired. And top of the list of what I wrote on the sheet was to replace the tension spring. The tension spring was broken. So you could see the two tension discs, but the spring for the thread was not there. And I picked it up just before leaving for Ireland and didn't look at it. I was in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. That's when trouble always starts. When I went to set it up today, I thought I could do that today. Well, there was it was rewired, but there was no new uh, tension spring. So guess where it's going tomorrow? Back. It was an, and luckily I still have the work order sheet that I had filled out on what I wanted them to do. The problem is is that I, I lost my longtime vintage machine repair guy. He. Uh, retired or left or moved away or whatever but he's not available further okay so here's this one da, 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 da. see how easy that is it's quick you're not even thinking too hard just cover those pieces with fabric I'm gonna plug in my iron real real quick right here and then uh, we'll check to see who's tuning in I use my phone to read your emails because I'm far enough away from the computer screen that I I can't reach to type so um, we'll you'll see me with my phone but that's my way of communicating with you. Okay. I'll plug my iron in right here. I just turned my new air conditioner off so that I don't blow the fuse. Okay, so while that is heating up, hopefully we've got people tuning in with us today check my mail sometimes that takes a minute to update I'm actually sewing in the basement and sometimes the connection down here is a little bit slow oh my goodness we've got 18 coming in AJ says just want to say thanks for quilt cam today so AJ's here she's the quilting pot podcast gal she's here with us today and then here's Mallory who says Mel from Peru, Indiana here. So excited for quilt cam today. I'm cutting up t-shirts for a quilt. Finally got some uninterrupted sewing time today for my birthday. Oh, Mel, happy birthday. Um, who could ask for a better gift? Thanks so much for making time for all of us. We really appreciate it. I appreciate it too because it gets me out of the work zone and gets me sewing on something I want to be sewing on, something I can share. Uh, a lot of times when I'm down to a book crunch the way that I am right now, I can't show all of the book projects and I've been working on pieced borders and I'm putting this together and I'm putting that together and there's a whole lot of sewing going on but I can't even post about it on the blog. So today is fun. I get to sew on what I want to sew on. All right. Kim says, time to stitch with Bonnie, almost like being at a retreat. I like to think of that. It's like retreat in our, in our own comfort of our own home. And here's a hello from Cheerleading Crumb, who left a hello on YouTube, so hello to you. And this one says, uh, oh my goodness, Judy wants to sit, share her finished Orca Bay, and it looks absolutely gorgeous. She says, just wanted to share my finished Orca Bay. It's hanging in a local fiber art show. And she's from Columbus, uh, Mississippi. And I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm going to try to biggie size it on my phone. But it's in shades of green and purple. So that's her, her Orca Bay hanging at a show. She got it all done. Good job. Green has been my favorite color since returning from Ireland. Can you tell? Do you guys like this shirt? The Seasons of Ireland. Spring, summer, autumn, winter. And all the sheep have umbrellas in the rain. The only one that's really different is the summer one has sunglasses. <laughs> but it's still raining. It did. It rained every day while we were there. Okay, way to the top here. Kim says, glad to be able to stitch with you today. Finishing a quilt top today for dear daughter. A wedding quilt due in July of 2008. <laughs> 
Well, you know, those quilts, they do take a little bit of time, don't they? Hope to finish the top and send to Valerie in Illinois. It is a king-size quilt and won't fit easily on my long arm. Can't wait to hear about your trip to Ireland and see what you are stitching on today. That's from Kim in Minnesota. But, oh, you guys, the flooding in Calgary. Terrible. Terrible. Okay, I'm going to iron this one. And this is one I stopped because it was having issues because I fell short of the paper on the side. So what I need to do is take another long piece. When you when you have a problem like this, I'm going to find a longish piece. Okay, there's a longish piece. That's not colorful enough. I hear my phone pinging. And when you can't find anything in the basket, you dig into the bottom drawer down here. What do we got? Oh, we got red polka dots. That'll do. I will cut this in half into a triangle. So I'm short right here. So I want to lay this piece just like this. And so about a quarter inch from the red so that I can flip it out. And it'll kind of make a wedge on the side of the block. But that's going to add some interest too because I can't fall short in my measurement there. But yet I want it, the piece that I'm adding to be wide enough that it makes a statement. It wouldn't do anything if just a thread of that red was showing. So I'm going to let it make a statement by moving that over that way. And I'm going to sew. This means I'm going to end up part with a partial seam. I can't sew all the way off the paper. I've got to just stop where the triangle ends, which means I'm going to have to remove it from the machine here. And don't be afraid to sew some of those boring fabrics in there. They really do add a lot. And colors that you think might not work. Just sew them in. Okay, so I need to raise the needle and the presser foot and pull some extra thread out from that one because it didn't go all the way across. Okay, so now I'm going to trim the excess back, which means sometimes tearing just a bit of that paper to get that thread out and fold it back and trim. This is why I like getting in here with scissors. It'd be too big of a pain with a rotary cutter and a ruler. All right, so now I covered that spot where I was short, and now I can take off and just fill up the, the top of that strip. Let's see who was pinging on the phone. We've got a message from Subi who says, I sure enjoyed the Ireland trip through you. I just finished swapping out two and a half inch purple strips from the Quiltville Yahoo group. Now I can sew on my spool blocks and log cabin blocks, and that's with love from Subi in Indiana. So glad you could join us, Subi. One of the things that's on my list this week is getting all of those, those baby quilts and the baby Afghans mailed off to my nephews who have not been born yet, but will soon be born. Another exciting thing that's happening here in Quiltville is our uh, closing on our cabin on July 3rd. Really looking forward to spending time with my boys over the 4th of July weekend and plans are underway already to float the river in kayaks and um, do lots of cooking, lots of grilling, all that kind of stuff. And, and we'll find out really quickly, I'm sure, what we need to survive in a cabin. Setting up housekeeping for the second time is, it's you know, oh goodness, do we need this? Do we need this? Do we need, need this? Yes, go buy a new can opener. My plan is to go through as much of the stuff here at home as I can and whittle it down to about half and take half the stuff over there and then um, fill in with stuff. But just think about it, all the stuff that you use every day, pots, pans, blender, toaster, 
all that kind of stuff we need. Okay, so this one flipped out pretty close to where the edge of the paper is. So if I put another seam there, by the time I take in the seam allowance, not much will show. So I'm going to move my next piece down from the edge of that blue one. And I'm trying to do this by looking at the screen, <laughs> which is mirror image of what I'm doing. So uh, let, let each piece you add count. Let each piece make a statement. So you don't want to have a seam real close to the edge that's going to get lost in the next seam. So just move this one down, sew it, and then trim that extra seam allowance away. I am big on trimming seam allowance because I want to eliminate as much bulk as possible. I'll move my trimming can here. Okay, so I need one more piece on this one and it should be done. can't believe how fast June has flown already. But when you're gone for about half of it, I guess it makes sense that it would be gone quickly, but uh, I wait all year for June. June is like my favorite month. Okay, so now this one is done. I can even trim some of this off and use this piece again. And it doesn't look like much now. But once it's trimmed up, you can see where the excess is around the outside of the paper. Once it's trimmed up, it'll play just fine. And I just keep going. Okay, that piece will fit right there. What can I do with this one? Put that one right there. I've had several ladies ask um, to rent my machines while um, we are doing the Winston-Salem collaboration celebration in August and I'm really excited to um, pack up the machines with with bobbins for them and and little s seam guides to measure their seam allowance and a thing a sticky thing to make mark their seam allowance and we're gonna have a great time here in Winston-Salem in August. Whoops, who's that jingle? Sherry! Sherry says, too bad I couldn't just give you the stuff from our cabin that is now for sale. <laughs> She's in California selling her cabin. I'm in North Carolina buying a cabin. She has leftover stuff. You're going to need a hefty, hefty garage sale girl. Um, she says, loved Belfast pictures and descriptions. It's great to experience it again. And she was um, walking around with us on our on our one free day. That was really kind of cool to have free time to just decide what you want to do, where you want to go, here's a cab, take the cab, share the fare, um, where do you want to eat lunch. It was really, really neat. Um, I totally enjoyed the um, Titanic experience. It's it's not really a museum, it's kind of a hands-on experience and it um, shows you how they built the Titanic, what all went into building it uh, in Belfast. And uh, it's what we call a heavy heart experience because you know that it's a disaster at the end. And so many people's careers depended on building that ship. And uh, of course it was built and it was, it was, one of the jokes is it was fine when it left Belfast. <laughs> so, um, but we all know what happened, and that's just really heartbreaking. Okay, I added a triangle, so now I'm going to add pieces to either side of that triangle, so it's going to be kind of a tilted flying goose thing here. And when you start in the center of the paper, you just got to lift that previous one and give yourself a trail of thread. Yeah, 
there's a little, little yellow piece that's cute. Everybody does their crumb blocks a little bit differently. I was working on some crumb blocks earlier this week while Tanya was here. And they were basically just built around a squarish center with random strips just going around. They go pretty wonky. Mine are more like crazy quilting or crazy patchwork. And I like the combination of both. Some with some straight lines and some with some crazy lines makes the quilt more interesting to look at. All right, let's check to see who's sewing along with me today. Share your project. Let me know what you're working with today. Susan says, Greetings from Knoxville, Tennessee. Having time to sew on Sundays and watching Quilt Cam. Life just can't get much better than that. I agree, girl. I agree. She says, After I finish a cross-stitch Christmas ornament, I'll be planning my next quilting project. Oh, don't even bring up quilt, uh, Christmas in July. Somebody already posted how many days are left until Christmas, and I don't even want to think about it yet. I've often said that, that Christmas ought to be like leap year. But, you know, if it came every four years, we could really do it up big. We'd have time to finish our projects so that we could do it up big. Oh, my goodness. Here's pictures from Teresa, who says, Pictures of my first and second quilt. The first one was a log cabin for my dad. The second for a new great niece. And this is Teresa in Pennsylvania. So this is the log cabin quilt she made for her dad. Isn't that great? I never get tired of log cabins. I think they are just so fun to look at. Oh, and that's really cute. So this is kind of like a long tumblers for her niece, her first and second quilt. I think she's doing a great job. Good job, Teresa. Just Ducky says, I'm listening while I am catching up on some work at home on the computer, but I am planning on working on some more wild and goosey blocks later this afternoon and evening since the family is like slugs today on this super hot Sunday. I am about halfway there. I'm making a total of 30 blocks for a small quilt, and that's from Jen in Pennsylvania. It's pretty hot and sluggy down here, too. When the hubby came in from tennis, he said it was just the air was so thick outside. Of course, I am basking in my new air-conditioned basement since we put an air conditioner in the window this week. Um, Terry in British Columbia says, joining you today while I'm trying to finish my Easy Street blocks. I upsized it. Wow to king size, and I want to try and have the top pieced by the end of the month. That king size is big. It was big as it was. I think it was queen when I did it. So I'm working on um, the next mystery. So far, I've, I've just figured things out in kind of grayscale, but I'm playing with different color families, and I'm not sure which direction to go with color families. Of course, my brain is completely on Ireland. Um, look, I've got this whole set of fat quarters sitting right here. See, these are, these are all my, my shamrocks and stuff that I picked up. Our bus tour stopped at Nikki Foley's um, little quilt shop on the way back from um, the peninsula. Ding, the Dingle Peninsula. I couldn't remember the name. And uh, all of these big buses stopped in front of these little, little tiny shop. It was so precious. And I did pick up some, some shamrocks and stuff. And they're sitting right here next to my, my lovely little... Ireland bear, so and my, my Ireland green shirt. I've got definitely have green on the brain, but we did green for our last mystery. You know, Easy Street had a lot of green in it. So do I do green again, or do I give it a year off, or what do I do? If you have a a, a color scheme that you really really want to work with, send me your ideas, and maybe that will uh, inspire me to try your colorway. I have not done a patriotic quilt in a while, but I know several people did Easy Street using patriotic colors, so I don't want to leave them out. They're not going to want to do another patriotic quilt. So, uh, if you, but if you have any colors that have really been calling your name lately, you know, list me. Don't just say, you know, red and green or blue and orange. I need, like, at least three colors plus a background to make it 
interesting enough in the steps to, to work on. Some of these scraps are like ages old and they're still my favorites. So while I was working with those crumb blocks um, while Tanya was here, I could tell that those crumbs and scraps were ages old also. My secret to making those work for me is that you have to throw in other things. You, my, my overhead light is not, is not happy with the... Well, I think we'll just turn it off then. If it's going to blink on and off, we'll just turn it off. Um, if you start feeling too dated, you have to throw in some new stuff to spice it up. Nobody will be happy to work on a scrap quilt or a crumb quilt that was all just 1990s thimbleberries. There's not enough variety. There's not enough contrast. They're all the same shade of gray-brown dummy down colorways. They're all burgundy, navy, forest green, and beige. There was not a lot of color variety in, in the lines of fabric in those days. So if you want to make a quilt with those using those scraps that, that you are going to like now, that means you have to throw in more than just those, which means you might want to pick up Something that's bright new and, and is a moda and has butterflies on it. Yes, you can put this with your thimbleberries. You can mix your 30s fabrics in. You can mix the brighter batiks in. The thing that you want to do is keep yourself from being bored. And then you will, en you will enjoy working on your project and the project will get done. So I found myself while working with those blocks wanting to grab things to spice them up because there was so much navy, dusty blue, mauve, um, seafoam green. Remember seafoam green and how gray it was and, and beige? I wanted purple. I wanted orange. I wanted bright yellow. I wanted hot pink. I wanted teal. These are the things that I tend to, to throw in to make the... the Older, murkier scraps, like there's some Civil War ones in here. This was looking fairly murky down here. Throw in some brighter ones. Give it new life. You want the whole box of crayons in there. And it is, it is a real challenge to work with somebody else's fabrics. I keep losing the toe button for this foot pedal. Okay. Just sewing on. And if things if things get boring, ask yourself, what have I not thrown in here yet? And oftentimes that's the one thing that will perk it up. If you've thrown in blue a couple times already, don't put in any more blue. Throw in something that's not in there. So, for instance, I have blue in here three times. There's kind of an aqua blue with, with ladybugs, and here's a blue stripe from a recycled shirt. But I've also got navy down in here. Okay, these th the, blue, the blue family is covered. What have I not put in here? Green, orange, purple black, yellow, anything that is not in here already is what I'm going to want to add next. And I'm digging for a piece of yellow. Here's a nice, nice piece of yellow. Okay, let's see who else is tuning in. Roz says, I'm in England, and this is the first time I've, 
I, I am on this cam. It's great. I've just started learning how to quilt. Well, Roz Castle, we're so glad that you could join us today or this evening, um, wherever you are in England. So glad to have you with us. Once you go scrappy, there's no turning back. And as soon as you let your friends know that you want their scraps, you will have more scraps than you know what to do with. It's a, it's a really fun windfall. Glad you could join us. Uh, <laughs> Nellie Jean says, love the shirt, little lassie. Absolutely. So I don't know where Nellie Jean's from, but she likes the shirt. Carol says, we were watching and I was knitting. Unfortunately, the cat has decided to watch from my lap and I can no longer knit. Maybe she'll leave me in a few minutes. So here's her cat. And there's Quilt Cam in the background. I love it. I love it. What's the other picture? Oh, yeah. That the cat has has absolutely taken over. They just know where there's a cozy, warm spot and where you can, uh, you know, scritch some ears, knit a little bit, quilt a little bit, scritch some ears, scratch under the neck. They just absolutely love it. This one is from Sigrid. Hey, girl, how are you? She says, hi, Bonnie. I'm happy to see you on Quilt Cam again. I'm sewing hexes, but not an owl this time. Please tell us about your impressions in Ireland. It was wonderful to have met you there and to have taken your class. Wonderful mes uh, memories. Hello from Germany. And that's Sigrid. You know, I, I loved absolutely everything about Ireland. It was it was the total Ire Ireland experience. For instance, the, the first hotel, I have to say they did awesome putting us where, where they put us. I'm going to give myself a handful of scraps to work from here. Um, we stayed in Galway at a place called, oh gosh, I'm going to even forget the name. Okay, our, our first hotel. And the first night was great because it was a weeknight. But come Saturday, there was a wedding. and uh, Or come Friday night, the, the pub was right underneath my window. And, and the pub was going hard and heavy. And there must have been karaoke or something going down there. And they sounded like they were having the best time ever. But I needed to be up at 6 o'clock in the morning. So I, here I am piling pillows on top of my head going, oh, it'll soon be over. It'll soon be over. 2.30 in the morning, they stopped singing at the pub. And uh, the next day, I thought, okay, it's going to be better today. And it was the wedding. So then there was a wedding reception in one area of the hotel plus the pub in the other area of the hotel and then at 5 30 in the morning there were these blokes outside just i don't know whether they were tossing a soccer ball or what they were doing at 5 30 in the morning but it's broad daylight at 5 30 in the morning in ireland this time of the year so they were just out enjoying their day and i was trying to catch one more hour of sleep and uh well no we got up and went for a walk um i loved the food i loved the people it, it, the only thing that was hard for me, but I even could learn to love that, was the weather. I guess we, we had what is officially known as Irish summer while I was there. It lasted all of six days. And then it got to be cold and wet and rainy again. And I, oh, here's a purple one. This is good. Um, just loved it. Just, just loved it. I, would I go back? Absolutely. In fact, there's some um, changes being made to the International Quilt Festival itself. They are going to add other fiber art items, not just quilts, but other fiber arts and handcrafted um, things. I don't know what that what that all will entail, but I think it, it will make it very, very interesting. They're going to try a new venue. They were at the University in Galway the last two years. And there's pros and cons to that. It was a gorgeous campus, but the campus did not want signs up everywhere telling people how to get from place to place. They were still trying to preserve the campus feel because school's still in session. And so some of the ladies were saying things like, well, we had a hard time finding where we could go because there wasn't enough signs. Or it was too hard to go this far to see this exhibit because it was across campus. So I'm not sure what they are going to um, have as their new venue. But if you have a chance to go, by all means go. I will be going again in a few years, and I've got it on the calendar already to um, teach and to lead another tour in a few years. So um, I would hope that you would save your pennies and want to go with me. I, as far as favorite place, gosh, we went we went everywhere. We went um, from Galway. We we toured out towards uh, Kyle Moore Abbey was absolutely beautiful, and that's maybe an hour, hour and a half or so out of um, Galway. 
great day trip. Beautiful gardens. You can tour the the abbey. It's still a working abbey, so there's places that you that you really can't go. Um, I absolutely love churches and old cemeteries. So the one thing I wish I could have seen more of was old cemeteries. Um, I know I'm really weird that way. But other than that, we, we, we had our opportunity to see and to do. And my, my favorite part was um, interacting with the locals. I met some people at the show that I never would have met if it weren't for the show and was invited out to dinner at a pub with them and to walk the town and get to know them and um, and and we've become friends and so that's that's just really precious to me the people are the are the most important part of any event and there's a whole lot more that I could say about Ireland um, I have extended roots way way back we're talking what the 1600s or something like this in Northern Ireland because my family was um, British and at the same time I feel very conflicted of how Ireland was taken over and and the the Irish pushed to the the rocky non-productive very hard to eke out a living West Coast where things did not grow well and they had to you know, pay their rent to their new landowners when it used to be their land or or whatever. So, you know, history is always ugly in that way. And then I'm kind of embarrassed that perhaps my family somewhere back along the line what was part of that. Or maybe my family was brought over as servants or something and really they had to earn their living too for their family. I don't know enough because the the family history is like it goes back to okay instead of somebody having a maiden name that you can trace just becomes like uh, Mrs. John Smith so she now has no first name and no maiden name so you know fa family is hard to trace back farther than that but to stand there generations later was uh, pretty darn amazing Pretty darn amazing. Okay. Here's Nellie Jean says she's working on charity quilts, cutting squares from donated fabric. Isn't that fun? It's always more fun to play with somebody else's fabric than your own. So uh, thank you for doing the, the donated donation quilts, Nellie Jean. And this is from Andrea or and Andresa who says, I'm here joining in, and that's Andy Ray in Minnesota. So the Minnesota contingency is up by two. Wendy says, hello from Lewisburg, North Carolina. Where is that? I don't think I've ever heard of that town, but I've, I've only lived in North Carolina five years. So there's a lot of little burgs and things that I'm not sure where they are. She said, glad you had a fun time in Ireland. I would love to visit there someday. I am working on a quilt for kids project this afternoon. So glad you could join us, Wendy. The two spies. This is from Hadassah, says, hey, checking in from Jerusalem. Just got back from seeing the supermoon. So glad you are back on. Did you guys hear about the supermoon? How many days is that supposed to be? Um, I'll have to look for it tonight, but where I am, I'm in the trees. So I have to get out and about, and hopefully it won't be blocked off by clouds here. But you know what? It's an amazing world when Hadassah can come in and say she just saw the moon. And, and in a few hours, that same moon will be visible over my house. I think that joins us all, so that's pretty amazing. Um, Mary says, it's Mary in Canada, right now on vacation in Nova Scotia, brought along my hand sewing project, and I'm sitting on the deck with you, quilting Baptist fans. Doesn't that sound blissful? And Kathleen says, Kathleen from San Juan won these blocks at the Rio Grande Valley quilt meeting. I made 20, called Stacking the Deck. I will be rewarded a $25 class gift certificate if I make it into a quilt by next meeting. So she's down to the wire. It has to be a finished quilt so that she can get that $25 gift certificate to take a class. Um, I will use to pay for your November class and the top's done. Awesome. Looks like um, four patches in the corner of a nine patch. I've seen an antique quilt that looks very similar. I love four patches. Four patches are my favorite. So good job, good job. We will be seeing you in November. 
And this one is from do, 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 Tartan says, Yay for Quill Cam. Thanks for squeezing us into your crazy busy schedule. Oh, you guys, it is, it is going to be uh, absolutely a zoo here over the next week or so. Um, I'll be leaving on Thursday, so maybe most of, the, most of the grunt work will be done. We're having new siding put on our house here, and the guy's supposed to come tomorrow to start. Um, vinyl siding, we have a wood sided house that was built in the 70s and we need new insulation and we need a way to stop critters from getting inside. We need, we need something that we don't have to keep adding sealant and stuff to because the, the, the wood cedar siding is just a mess. And uh, so that's going to be going on here starting this week. We'll, we'll take lots of pictures and let you, let you appreciate how your house is not a mess when mine is. We did the roof a couple years ago, and when we bought this house, we knew that it was it was a diamond in the rough, and that there would be a lot of things that we needed to fix. So little by little, we've just taken it one project at a time. The siding I've decided is going to be kind of a dark, dark khaki kind of a color. You know, not quite brown brown, kind of a khaki brown. You know, maybe about no, I don't know. Um, and then. My, do my door, my front door is rust, so we're going to put on, the shutters are going to be kind of rust colored and then we'll paint the front deck rail, the front um, porch rail, and the garage doors to match that. It's just going to be a long term thing, but it's worth it. But you'll be seeing plenty of photos of Bonnie's messy house in project progress in the next little while. This is the kind of fabric that really needs to be cut small, don't you think? I mean, seriously, what are you supposed to do with this? I don't even know where that came from, and it's too ugly to even go there. So uh, we're going to grab something else. <laughs> this will work. Okay. Last time I did quilt cam, something funny happened with YouTube, and it did not archive on my channel. So I am hoping that this one will. If it doesn't, what I've done is linked to them all under the quilt cam tab at the top of the blog, quiltville.blogspot.com. Even the ones that did not show up on my channel listings are, are linked there, so that you can always click those there um, to watch reruns or whatever. I am finding that I have like not a lot of variety here. I've got a lot of lights. There's just a lot of little neutrally things. This is the kind of little stuff that I love to do paper piecing with, and I can't I can't pitch it, but I'm looking for bigger pieces to use for this. I love this machine. Okay, so here's this one. Let me iron it. I was too busy talking and grabbed the same fabric twice. Does it matter? Not in the entire scheme of things, I don't think. But there's a good mix of stuff in there. Well, that one's done. We'll grab another. Now this looks like it was the end of a strip set. Not quite enough to be twosies for a four patch, but I'll just press that seam and set it right across the center. Little pieces like this can have another little piece added to it to make it wide enough. So we'll send that through as a leader ender. Here's the little piece. Is this one little? That one's little also. Okay, so we'll just sew that onto the end of that. I like to build sections and then sew them on because it kind of confuses your eye, makes it a little bit tougher to figure out how this was put together. I need something kind of darkish. And that will that do it? Yeah, maybe. There's just something really satisfying about using up every last little bit. Insane as it may be. 
Okay, so I've sewn these two pieces together. Now they're big enough to go across there. Little tr lots of little triangles. When you start getting too many little triangles, you can start sewing them to each other. What's this one, though? Okay. But I'm lazy, so I'm going to grab that one. <laughs> And don't forget to throw in some light ones because the light ones really do add a little bit of daylight where things can look a little bit dark and murky. Just try not to overdo it with the light ones or the whole block disappears. Okay, I've got two dark blues in here. That means no more dark blue. So what have I not added? There's no lights in here, so I probably ought to add a light one. I could also add um, purple or orange or yellow to this to kind of brighten it up because it's looking kind of... Uh... You can also change the angle on which way the strips are leaning, and that adds a little bit of interest. really hard to go wrong. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. By the time your scraps get down to this, I mean this is this is the tail end of the fabric food chain. There's nowhere else for these scraps to go. This is it. And uh, I've got buckets of crumbs like this just saved because they gotta be good to go somewhere. Yeah, that's looking better. Added just a little bit of daylight there. Make it look better. One thing that Tanya did while we were here is she made me up a big gallon jar. We have one of those big, big like a big pickle jar, gallon jar, wide mouth lid, glass of um, cucumber lime water. Sounds really crazy. It's crazy good. And I've uh, taken on to making myself a whole nother batch already. What you do is you slice a lime as thin as possible. Just very, very wafer thin. Put it in the bottom of the gallon jar and then slice up about half of a cucumber. Wafer thin. Put that in the jar. Fill the jar with ice. Then fill that with water. Put it in the fridge overnight and the flavor from the cucumbers and the lime just goes through the water. It is so good. So good, so thirst quenching. And I guess you can do it with other fruits and other things too, but I, I really like the cucumber lime. Oh, here's a nice big triangle. We like you. So that's what I'm drinking on the side over here. The best benefit is it, it's the cost uh, for a gallon. And you, I guess you can do it twice. If once the water's all gone, you can add another batch of ice and water back to the, the cucumbers and the limes again, and it will flavor that twice. Um, but no preservatives, no additives, no artificial sweeteners, no sodium, no whatever, and you're, you're getting the water that you need. I need to drink more water. But drinking plain water has never been fun for me. I'm not a fan of just water, water. Okay, so I'm making myself some little half square triangles to sew on. And these can be any size. You can um, even use your little bonus triangles saved from other projects. There's got to be, here's another one. We can, they're already right sides together. We're just going to sew them.
But that's one of my goals this summer is to really, really hydrate. Okay, two little triangles. So I need somebody to issue a challenge where all you can sew from is from your crumbs. No yardage allowed, just sew from crumbs. What could we get done from sewing with this stuff? What could we do? I'm going to sew these two together like a couple of little saw teeth. They're not even the same size as each other, but not quite. And then I'll use those as a section across the strip. Okay, this is coming along nice. Okay. Check-in time. Mary says, thanks for Quilt Cam today. I am working on prepping machine applique today and enjoying our time with you. That's a lot of prepping. Do you do the kind where you use a little brush and the starch and you prep it over the edge of the freezer paper? I know there's lots of ways to prep applique. Um, I think the, the prepping work is why I don't do a lot of applique. I'm just a piecer. I love to piece. Um, April says, I almost forgot about live quilt cam. Almost done with my Jamestown landing string blocks. I see you're doing the crumbs. Is that coupon paper on the back? Actually, it was a flyer. Some of these were flyers. Some of these were pattern back pages. Remember my cruise with Pat Sloan <laughs> a couple years ago? This is me and Pat Sloan right there in that picture. Even these leftover flyers become paper. Any paper, any reject paper that comes in your, your junk mail, whatever, can be used. And um, this one is from uh, Kathy Wheeler in Florida, working with you this afternoon. I am working on Pfeffer News from your book, Ready to Sew the Blocks Together. And she's in Frostproof, Florida. Julie says, I'm already getting excited about the mystery. My Easy Street is off to be machine quilted right now. When I get it back, I will photograph it and post it for you to see. I used black, yellow, red, green, and blue in mine. Wowzers. And that's in Alabama. Laura says, hey, Loris. I'm ironing shirts for work and then sewing a pot holder for a friend. Love to sew along with you. Tanya picked a perfect time for a road trip this week and was happy to hear she headed to Georgia. I know she brought a lot of love and comfort with her, and that's love from Cambria, California, Loris. Now I am I am right not too far off of 85 and 95, and um, our friend Siobhan um, had to have her her puppy cross the Rainbow Bridge this past week, and and. I've been a huge fan of Mac for, for many years, over 10 years now, and um, since I first met Mac. And so it was t time for him to join Buddy across the Rainbow Bridge, and so happy that Tanya could just pick up and go and spend a few days with Siobhan and then hit me on the way back. Because girlfriends do that for each other, right? So I'm pressing the seam open on the back side of these two little triangles just because I'm going to have to sew them face down and then flip them right side up and that's going to leave a, a bump. So, let's see, do I want that there? No, I want it here. Just deciding which one it's going to go on. Just distribute fullness and bulk where you can. It, sometimes it just can't be avoided. You can just build little segments in between adding segments on. So you can see here that I've added these two little half square triangles. Cute. Now this is looking kind of marching straight here. So the next pieces may kind of go off in another angle. Seams do not have to match up. In fact, they shouldn't match up. If they're matching up, then you're, you're working way too hard. I love these little crazy cats. 
remember this fabric that will punch up any boring block I tell you what Well, I've been making this stack of blocks and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them yet. If I border them, sash them, just sew them to each other and have the entire quilt be just malicious. Okay, it looks like this one needs just oh, one more corner. I've got one little corner of paper showing right here. So I'm going to do something there. And what color do I need? I have not found any purple. Is there any purple in here? There's a purple corner. That'll work. this one off. Okay, here's another one for the trim up pile. They don't look spectacular by themselves, but it's when you put them together that fun stuff starts to happen. What is this here? It looks like the leftover end of a strip set, like like after trimming and that's all that was left. We can sew that on. My wild and goosey blocks are sitting in a baggie, waiting to be decided upon whether I need to make more or, nope, this needs something added to it. Um, my brain can't go too many directions at once. If I want to add more blocks or set it with alternate blocks or use sashing or do something with it, but I'm thinking maybe a, a, a paper pieced flying goose sashing would even use up more of this stuff. Remember I was talking about what if all we had to work with was our crumbs? Would it even make a dent? I doubt it. I doubt it. All right. One more column done. Let's check in and see. National color of Ireland, Susan says. I went to Ireland with my brother back in the early 90s on a 17-day seven day tour of Great Britain. I saw a sweatshirt that I loved the design on, but I wasn't going to get it because I'm not a fan of bright green. <laughs> you become a fan of bright green, really, you do. You do. Um, I did end up getting the design done. I'm having a hard time reading. My eyes are so dry. Um, I need a bigger font, guys. Okay, I did an up ugh, on a navy blue sweatshirt because our tour guide told me that the national color of Ireland wasn't green. It was navy blue. I would encourage you to find some navy blue fabrics to go with the shamrock fat quarters. You will come out with a gorgeous quilt. You could even bind it with some gold, too. Great idea. You know, I was, I was, uh, I've actually got a, a quilt that's going in the next book that is... Um, was all leaders and enders and it's all shades of blue and green and neutral and uh, and it I love blue and green together so that really that really would be great I also love purple pink there we go I just remember being told when I was little, you know, oh, it's St. Patrick's Day, I need to wear green, that my family would say, no, you wear orange. But, but St. Patrick's Day is green, they'll pinch me. No, you wear orange. Mm -hmm. And that had to do with the whole family roots thing. And, uh... Now I understand why, and I really enjoy the Ireland flag, how it is green, white, and orange. I really, really need to just 
catch this box of crumbs. Oh, law. And a little bit of navy here won't hurt. Red. Red is also such a great power color. If things are starting to look kind of uh, boring, throw some red on there. Just two. No rhyme, no reason. Just sewing down the scraps. Here's from Suzanne Lamb who says, Loved watching your Irish trip unfold. Thank you for doing your, your email in bold. <laughs> Sometimes when people do different fonts, it's, that's what makes it hard to read. When I was there a few years ago, I bought a hat just like the one you're pictured trying on in your blog. Did you buy it? No, I didn't buy it. My luggage was already at weight limits, and it was just one th more thing that I knew I wouldn't get a whole lot of use out of um, here in the southeast. Um, I'm not much of a hat wearer. I sweat. Head gets itchy. But now I'm wishing that I had picked that hat up. It was really cute, wasn't it? Um, she says, I hope so. It really suited you. Spending this quilt cam time with you today, getting my latest baby quilt sandwiched and quilted. I finished piecing it months ago, but have been super slow to complete it. Thanks for the nudge. Take care. Well, happy to nudge you. I'm glad that you could tune in with us and sew along today. Terry says, mystery idea. How about using your plaids? Please say hi to all my Finish It Friday crafty friends. Love reading all your posts. And that's Janae Davis Robinson, Illinois. Wonderful. Red, white, and blue, Kim says. I will always do another red, white, and blue quilt. My Easy Street had brown and yellow in it, too. Cousin to Kevin's that was donated. Can't wait for the next mystery. Just have a couple of colors that are set. Then let us pick the last few. That would be fun. Yeah, I could do that. You know, and if I always just say, you know, pick three colors in a background, that kind of leaves people open to do whatever they want to do. And I do show samples of my fabrics, and I really liked doing the, the color card thing from Lowe's um, this last time. It gave something concrete for people to match their scraps to. Karen says, for your next mystery, how about yellow, gray, black, cream, orange, and green? Wow. Watching you, that's a lot of colors <laughs> to try to fit in. She says, watching you today and finishing up a quilt top for a wedding gift. Um, may, some of those may work. Can't have too many colors. I like that, though. String geese, Amelia says, my quilt in progress inspired by you. Excuse the box in the bottom left corner. I will be closing on my house on the July 19th. How long is the strip you are piecing on? So here's her. This looks really, really great. Remember, I, I found that antique quilt back um, last spring with the string pieced flying geese in it, and she's working on hers right there. What a girl to be sewing along when she's closing on her house here in a couple of weeks. Um, these, these pieces are two and a half by eight and a half. And this one is from Celine, who says, I'm working on my roll, roll cotton bowl. I have all the string blocks ha halves sewn on into squares. Next step is to start sewing the blocks together. Yeah, I really enjoyed Ireland. The country and its people were wonderful. And now when I see Celine's name in my inbox, I can just picture her smile and uh, the fun that we had there. Okay. Finding little squares sewn to other little squares, but they're not quite big enough to go all the way across so we can add something else to it. Or here's a yellow. Is this open? Oh, this works. Okay. It does feel good to 
be able to sit and sew this week, even if a lot of it was work-related, after being gone for two weeks. I'm going to put this a little, almost not worth saving, but I think I can sew this on here. I really enjoyed um, the time walking around Dublin also and being able to see things like uh, the Book of Kells at Trinity University. The Book of Kells. That is like like major piece of history. And there it was. And there I was standing there. It was just really amazing. Digging, digging, digging. Looks like this was part of a... Oh, how is this for a bonus? Something that was already stitched together. We'll just add that right on. Colors are kind of boring, but... on these crumb strips reminds me of all of the mosaics that we saw in churches and buildings too. I just I can't imagine standing there to set all of those tiles together. Murky what can we add to this to make it better? I've got blues, reds, brown, purple, but they're all kind of on the grade scale. So at this point, I would throw in something like bright lime green, hot pink, some screaming yellow or something. Something to bring this out of its dark and murky dungeon status. So what have I got in here that might fit that bill? There's a nice yellow except that that's going to go up against another yellow. Turquoise, what do we got here? That might work. Ooh, this might even be better. Oh, let's see. Don't you love discovering things? Turquoise, this turquoise helps a lot. Okay, I'll sew that on there. I just seem to get a bigger pile of uh, scraps <laughs> than progress. Okay, got a little half square triangle made with some stuff, and I think I will sew it to the side of this yellow piece and use that as a whole section to sew on. Making a ton of progress here, you guys. This is a, a fun quilt to work on. Here's from Steffi, who says, Greetings from chilly and rainy Germany. It's a quiet Sunday evening. My husband watches TV, and I am in my sewing room and trying out some border ideas for my current quilt. So nice to quilt with you. So glad to have you join us, Steffi. Kitty pacing. This is from Peggy. She says, Last quilt cam, there was a kitty pacing in the background. So funny. Poor thing. Oh, that was my, my Emmy Lou. She knows, uh, she'll, she'll pace around, but I, I think she's afraid of the camera. <laughs> or if she hears my voice, um, she's not sure where to land. So she's upstairs. She's upstairs today. She says, I'm trying to train myself to use leaders and enders. Man, it's hard to teach an old gal new tricks. It is. It's like doing one of these. But it's worth it. So you always leave something. 
underneath the needle. No matter what it is, always leave something underneath the needle and snip from behind and then you're ready to take off sewing again. Plus you can build more stuff faster. And that's Peggy in Mississippi. Amy says, this is Amy from Illinois who was on the Ireland trip with you. Hi Amy, how are you? She says, I'm celebrating my birthday today while watching you on Quilt Cam. I do have to leave a little early to go to my son's for my birthday party, but till then I'm watching you. I'm cutting out squares for our guild service projects today. So that's another happy birthday to Amy. We had so much fun uh, on, on our bus. The, the singing on our bus was hysterical. It was so fun. And the stories. I am not talking about flower vases on Quilt Cam. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we had we had an absolutely absolutely fabulous time. I couldn't have asked for a, a better bunch of ladies. Um, you know, it, you really over over that period of time, you really do become friends with people. And it's it's uh, the next day. I was like so sad. It's like where is everybody? <laughs> I'm happy to be home, but where are my peeps? Amy, did it take you a long time to get over the jet lag? This this trip really. Through me, I slept and I slept and I slept and I slept, and it still took forever to get my body clock back to normal. Okay, we got some pal here. Yeah, it's really fun to throw in some modern scraps with, oh, there's the piece that was, was buried under there. Throw in some of those new scraps along with the old ones. It'll just make you more excited about your project. tonight. So I have plans for some sweet potatoes and steaks on the grill and nice green salad. I have not had any regular potatoes since coming home. <laughs> there was nothing but potatoes on that trip. I did love the breakfasts though. The hotels had us fabulous breakfast. They'd fix you an omelet while you waited. They had sausages and bacon and fresh fruits and all kinds of goodies. We did not lose weight this trip. Here's a large half square triangle. What can we do with this? I know this was not mine. I don't know where it came from. I'm game for collecting scraps at the end of a workshop, so who knows who this belonged to. It's not quite wide enough. Where is it? Maybe if I turn it that way. Oh, it's just shy. I'm going to have to sew something to the side of it. You can build pieces side by side as well as top to bottom. And stuff that's already sewn together is a bonus. There's a nice green. But not long enough so it gets to be sewn to something else. I'm excited about this project. 
Who knows what somebody will think 50 years from now when they find it. Who was this woman and why did she sew all this stuff together? Okay. I'll find my phone. Candace says, hi from Georgia, USA. Bonnie, I was so happy to take a break to enjoy quilt cam today. I am very excited for another reason. About a week ago, I went to help a friend pack up her elderly mother's home since she was coming to live with her. In the process, she gave me an unused vintage Singer sewing machine. Oh my goodness. Because I have been talking about how following your blog has made me aware of how great they are to work on and how I would never buy another modern machine. Most of what I do is just straight piecing anyway. I have not been bitten by the embroidery bug. Wouldn't you know it, I turn on Quilt Cam today and the machine she gave me looks very much like the machine you are sewing on. Uh, can't wait to do some research on it. Thanks so much for all your good info and I love, love, love seeing all the photos from Ireland. If you want to know where the model number is on your Singer, if it's, if it's a new enough, I say new enough because I'm talking 1940s, 30s, 40s, 50s and such, the model number will be badged on the front part of the machine. And uh, this one is a 301A. If you have a 301A, it has a slant needle, which is really nice because it actually puts the, the tip of the needle about an inch further towards you than it would normally be if the needle were going straight up and down. So it's an inch closer towards you, and because that needle is at a slant, it is awesome for paper piecing where you're paper piecing to sew on a line to follow a line because the needle visibility is so great. I love this machine. Um, you know, I, I flip flop back and forth. Oh, this is my favorite. No, this is my favorite. Oh, that one's my favorite. But I really do love this machine. What is this kind of junky fabric? We're going to sew it on there. The only downside to the 301 is that it has the same size bobbin as a featherweight, which means tiny bobbin, have to stop and replace the bobbin more often. Um, but as far as downsides go, that's not a bad one. Threw a bunch of orange into this one, looking pretty good. I think so. Can hardly wait to get this stack. Let's see how what have we done today? All right. I think that one was already was that one already done? I don't remember if that was already done or not, but we've at least done this many just in a little past hour and a half. So hopefully this has encouraged you to pull out a project and to work on it a little bit and uh you know, it takes it takes time. It takes production time. And that's the one thing we forget about with the quilt. And I think that's why we end up with so many UFOs is we get bored working on what we're working on and we see the new project and we want to try that or we want to try different colors or we're a squirrel. But you have to put in concentrated production time to complete the project. So hopefully you'll be able to use quilt cam time for that as I'm using it for this. You may see me with these again and again and again and again until they're done. So quilt cam is not about doing something new all the time. It's just a way for me to share what's going on in my studio with you. Pick up a project, stick to it, finish it, and move on. Black. Black is another good color to add if something is looking kind of murky. I've got some, that, that's a nice black piece in here. Let's see what I, sometimes I end up taking out seams. Oh yeah, that's a nice black piece. Iron it up. And sew it right on. And 
turquoisey blue is always good. I do fold back and trim out extra seam allowance. Blue corner on there. Just make your decisions quickly. Just grab something and go. There could always be something that would be a better choice. Always. But but just make your choice and go in the whole scheme of things. <sighs> One more piece on this one and it's done. Just fun. Just fun. Maybe I need something a little wider. What have I got here? Oh. Looks like these are little florals or something. Well, it's just. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah. Make your choice quickly, but just make sure it's one that you like. We'll throw this rust piece on here. Yeah, no matter what I say, you know what you like, so just go for it. Okay, coming along. This one has bigger, chunkier pieces. I may go a little bit smaller down this end just to make it more interesting. But it's nice to have some pieces that are not pieced so tightly next to some that are, just because they give your eye a place to rest. But, you know, that's what size the pieces were. Nell from Nebraska is here. So hello, Miss Nellie Jean. How are you today? And Linda says, today is my first time on Quilt Cam. Love it. I have just finished cutting all my scraps into usable sizes. You're my inspiration. And that's Linda from Portland, Tennessee. Thank you for joining us, Linda. That's very sweet of you to say so. I'm going to go to way to the top of the inbox here. We have Valerie Bradley who says, What I'm working on and mystery colors suggestion. It's been such fun to sew along with you. I've been working on a baby quilt for my neighbor. She's expecting her first baby, and I'm so excited for her. I've attached a photo of the top, which I literally just finished using fabrics I had in my stash. It's like a free project using up what I already have. Also, a suggestion on colors for the next mystery. My husband and I are car people, and we both admire BMW M3 sports cars. I was thinking of making a quilt in the M motorsport colors. Red, light blue, dark blue, and silver. That would kind of go right along with the whole um, patriotic kind of color scheme I was thinking of. That might be nice. We'll have to check that. She says, I've attached a photo of the M badge to give you a better idea of the colors. Thanks for giving us all your sewing time. And oh, how cute is this? I love what you've done with the stripes. This is just so cute. This is the baby quilt that she just finished while uh, on quilt cam with us. Isn't that fun? There's a striped fabric in the center that is echoed in that inner, first inner border there. Super use of stripes. I love it. Oh, and there's, there's the colors that she's thinking of for the mystery quilt. So we'd have dark blue, light blue, red, and silver gray. Maybe could do that if we threw in some, some maybe gold or some black or something to go with that. That's not half bad. Giselle says, welcome home, Bonnie. So nice to join you live again. Tonight I'm finishing hand quilting Baptist fans on my log cabin top. Ooh, is that gorgeous. She says, it has been such an enjoyable process. We'll need to make another top now to do more. Thanks for all you do for us. And that's Giselle from Jersey, UK. Boy, I don't know if you can see the texture on this. 
if I hold it still enough, maybe the camera will focus on in, but you can really see what the Baptist fan texture does to her log cabin quilt. It's just, just stunning, Giselle. Like I said, I love, I love a log cabin. Always love a log cabin. And Mary says, an autocorrect sure messed with my comment. I read on Facebook you were... Okay, so... Let's see, did I miss a, missed a comment? Let's see, here's another one. I read on Facebook that you were doing... <laughs> Always be sure to check your autocorrect before you hit send, girlfriend. She said, so I got up early, skipped breakfast with my retreat ladies and drove home. I missed you too. I did work on more of the parts of my midnight flight while I was there. Four of us brought our Easy Street quilts to take a picture together. It was posted on Facebook on Friday. Judy D. tagged you. I hope you got to see it. If not, I will email you the picture. Please email it to me because I don't get all the stuff that's tagged. Tag stuff does not necessarily show up on my wall because there would just be so much stuff on my wall all the time. Um, so please email me the photo and I would love to see it. And Judy says, would love to see a quilt using sage green, magenta, gold, and either beige or tan as a background. Green is my favorite color. And that's Judy in South Carolina. South Carolina. Kathy says, hmm, sorry. I'm working on a few things here. I'm finishing the binding on the colorful quilt with a yellow border to send to Oklahoma. I'm struggling to come up with a name for this one. And I'm playing with a pink and purple quilt for a very special little girl. I love watching Quilt Cam and appreciate all your words of wisdom. Your blog is one that I read on a daily basis. Oh, thank you so much. I enjoyed your trip to Ireland, through, though probably not as much as you did. And that's from Kathy in southwestern Wisconsin. So she's got a gorgeous bricks quilt here to be sent for the Oklahoma folks. Um, I know that's blurry to you but it's just gorgeous. You just got to take my word on it. And she needs a name. And then she's got the, a purple kind of a puss in the corner thing going here for a very special little girl. Very, very nice. Well, everybody, I have really, really enjoyed um, being back with you on Quilt Camp today with lots of love from my basement um, to you. As I said uh, on the blog post, we may be able to do this Wednesday night. We're, we have it on, on plans for Wednesday night, depending on what's going on with the house and the new siding and everything else. I may or may not be able to do it, but let's try. Um, if you check the blog on Wednesday morning, it will probably tell you whether it will be a go or not um, for Wednesday evening Eastern Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, I leave Thursday for Louisiana, so I'll be hitting the road and, and uh, hopping on another plane on Thursday for the, a weekend with them. But then I am home, though most of, most of July I'm home. We close on our cabin on July 3rd, so I'll be spending the 4th of July holiday with my family up at the cabin and trying to get that all put together, which will be a whole lot of fun, too. So you can follow along with that adventure on the blog. Um, I hope that you'll join me again. Remember, the previous episodes of Quilt Cam are available on YouTube, and the, all of the episodes are listed under the Quilt Cam tab at the top of the blog because some of them, for some reason, did not show up on my YouTube feed. Um, until next time, go sew something, keep sewing something, use up those scraps, have a lot of fun, um, and enjoy your weekend. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.